Apparently all, you all want to know a lot about my life, which is not interesting at all, but I'm gonna answer some questions for you. A lot of questions about what courses I am taking in Grenoble, what I am studying here in France, what's your knit, favorite knitting stores in the Netherlands. Hi, my name is Lisa and welcome back to a new video on my channel. I make crochet and knitting videos here and yeah, that's what I do. So welcome back and today it is another gloomy cloudy day here in France where I'm on exchange. So I felt like it would be a good time to knit and um, I asked you on my Instagram to send me some questions about anything that you would like to know about me, my life, my knitting stuff, things like that. So I'm gonna be answering those and I'm gonna be working on a sweater in the meantime because I felt like that's the most autumnal type of project. I am a little bit tired. I don't look amazing, I know, but it's fine. <laughs> I can deal with it. And I have a very, very big cup of tea. This mug is like the same size as my head. So grab your tea as well and your knitting or crochet project and I'm gonna answer all of your questions because I have such an interesting life. I don't really, but somehow you still want to know stuff about me, so <laughs> I will answer the questions. Mm. My tea is already kind of cold, actually. The project I am working on is... I've just divided the stitches. So it is this. It's the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. I will try it on in the end to see how far I have gotten during this video. But I'm now at the part of the body here where it's just going in around and I've just divided the stitches for the sleeves. Yeah, so that's nice because it's like only stuck in that stitch from now on. So that's gonna be easy. No making mistakes, hopefully, while making this video. Okay, questions. Let me open my Instagram. I didn't organize the questions beforehand, so just gonna go take a look and see. A lot of questions about what courses I am taking in Grenoble, what I am studying here in France. A lot of questions like this. So I'm gonna address that first. Okay, <laughs> maybe it sounds a bit complicated, but I am studying normally in the Netherlands. I do European studies with a major in European history and French and I did a minor in journalism and here in France in Grenoble I'm studying at Sciences Po for those Frenchies out there so it's a political science that I'm doing here the courses I'm taking I'm taking a lot because the school system here is a little bit different where you take six courses at the same time during the whole semester whereas in the Netherlands I would have two courses for eight weeks and then another two courses and like I would only have usually two or three courses at the same time but now I'm having six at the same time even eight officially so the courses I am taking here are first of all Français pour les sciences sociales it's like just a French language class then I have France état institution société which is like French state institutions and society. It's like a class about France itself. Pretty interesting though. Then I am taking my... I have three classes in French and three in English. My third French class is Enquête par l'image, Enquête sur l'image, or the other way around, something like this. It's about images and politics, how they are displayed in photos and stuff like that. And then for my English courses, I'm first of all taking geopolitics, Kind of speaks for itself. Then I'm taking change in global politics, uh, a bit similar, a little bit different, but yeah, that. And my last one, which has been my favorite so far, is history and socio-anthropology of non-Western civilizations. It's a really cool course where, yeah, like I said, it focuses on non-Western civilizations, which is something that I haven't, I haven't learned a lot about during my studies, so I'm really, really curious to know that. And then my two other courses that I'm taking is like a French tutoring, like for the language of French, I'm doing that. And lastly, I do a sport here that is also considered noté, so like for a grade and for ECTs. 
but my university in Amsterdam won't recognize those ECTs because in the Netherlands it's not very normal to do sport graded in uni, but I'm still doing it and I'm doing climbing. So yeah, a lot of different things I'm doing here, but I'm really, really enjoying it a lot. It's a very cool opportunity to try out new stuff. Like for example, the climbing, I had done one climbing course a couple of years ago in Amsterdam, but after that never really did it again. And it's been really cool to to take pick it up again and see how bad my level is, oh my God. But yeah, it's been really cool. And also for the courses, it's a bit of a getting used to like how this French system works and stuff. But in general, the university is really good and uh, it's gonna be tough, I think, but I'll manage. <laughs> so yeah, those are the courses I'm taking. In general, it's political science that I'm doing here, which is a little bit different than what I did in Amsterdam, like compared, because European studies is in the humanities field and political science is not. So it's a little bit different, but still, I really enjoy it a lot. And there is quite some overlap between what I did in my previous studies and the things I'm studying now here. So that's what I am studying. Next question. This is a nice one. Do you have a favorite painter? I have a few. I really like art in general. It's something that I think is like so interesting. And actually I would love to study more about art as well. I'm struggling a little bit because I am knitting into new new on stitches in the underarm. So <laughs> struggling a bit to get my needle in there. But my favorite painter, I mean, my favorite artist is Niki de saint Val. It's a French artist and she makes a lot of, she has made a lot of uh, sculptures that are really, really cool and that I love a lot. And uh, she has made some paintings as well, but she's mainly known for her sculptures. And I think just that she's just a very interesting artist in general. And then in terms of painters, I love Impressionism a lot. I think it's really beautiful. I think that the Impressionism is really nice and uh, cool. So I am a sucker for like the classics, like the Monet and stuff like that. I'm a bit, I'm finding it difficult like to come up with names now, but from the top of my head, Niki de saint Val is my favorite um, artist by far. Are you planning on traveling to any other French cities while you are here? Mm, yeah, for sure. I want to travel as much as possible, as much as my schedule allows me. Last weekend I went to Montpellier, which was really nice to go to the coast and see it there. I had never been to Montpellier, I've been to the south of France before, but never in that specific city. And it was really cute and nice and yeah, a really nice little city. Mm, but I would love to go to Marseille, I think that's cool. My former roommate is uh, living in Toulouse, so I would love to go around there as well. The north could be really cool as well, like Normandy, I think. I would like to visit that, but I don't really know how much my schedule allows me to travel. And I do know that in January, I will probably have the whole month off. So that's when I can do the most traveling. I would love to go to Geneva in Switzerland as well. It's not too far from here, maybe in the north of Italy. So loads of options. But if you have a really good recommendation on what I should see in France and preferably stuff that is also nice to see in winter, since I know that the coast is really amazing, but in winter it's not the best place to go to. So yeah, let me know what cities I should go to during my semester here. Favorite knitting stores in the Netherlands? There are quite a few actually, <laughs> but I would start my favorites in Amsterdam. A lot of people always ask me about it. And I think that maybe when I get back to Amsterdam, I will, um, or at least back to the Netherlands, I will make a video about Amsterdam knitting stores since so many people DM me about it. But my, in Amsterdam, there are three main ones that I prefer the most. It's Steven and Penelope, The Offstop, and Hooks and Yarn. All three are really cute. In the Netherlands itself, in Utrecht, I love Sticks and Cups. Really nice store, very cute. The owner is really nice as well. And if you want to go to a really big one, then the Wolplein store um, in Brabant, in saint Beaumont is really nice. So I'd recommend that one if you have like a car and if you want to get a lot of, you want to see like a lot of yarn and not necessarily like cutesy hand dyed stuff, but more like the big brands like drops and things like that. 
But yeah, these are kind of my favorites and I want to discover more knitting stores but in the Netherlands these are the ones that I visited the most at least. My favorite knitting YouTubers and also sorry if I've already asked these questions maybe in the past before but maybe my answer has changed and maybe you still find it interesting and there's also a lot of new people here that don't watch all the old video all the old videos again so my favorite knitting youtubers are well love knits for sure bethany i think that her videos are so nice and she's such a has like a really calming personality and yeah i really like watching her videos a lot uh, tiffany lou is one of the first ones that i watch as well i like knitting traditions as well i think she's really nice then I love uh, Night Sky Knitting, Rachel, she's really nice. I really like We Grow Wild as well, I think it's a really peaceful channel and like she lives in Italy, is really nice looking and yeah, I like her a lot. And the last one I like a lot is High Fiber Knits. I think that her videos are super super nice and calming as well. So those are my favorites at the moment but I'm changing all the time and discovering new people all the time so let me know for sure. Who are your favorite knitting YouTubers because I'm always in for discovering new ones. Do you prefer to shop for yarn online or in stores? In stores for sure. I'm someone that is very picky about which colors I like and which colors I don't and it happened to me quite a few times that I ordered yarn online and I didn't like the color at all. So if I have the opportunity, in store for sure. Even if it can be a little bit more expensive, I prefer in store. And what I also do sometimes, guilty, is for example, knitting for Olive is a lot cheaper online than in store. So I have gone like, in, if it's just for a small quantity, I'll buy it in store. But if it's for a large quantity, I'll look at the colors in store and then would order it online but yeah <laughs> do you ever want to do a live stream i don't know live streams they scare me a bit i know that in the knitting world a lot of people do like the twitch streams and i think they're really fun and i love doing uh, video calls and stuff and then knitting but in general live streams they, they scare me a bit and i'm just scared that no one will show up and that it will be like awkward and stuff so let me know, do you think I should do a live stream or not? Because that feels a bit weird and not... I don't know. But if a lot of you want, a lot of you want me to do a live stream and promise to show up, then maybe I will do one one day. What's your favorite movie or show at the moment? What have I been watching? Uh, I've just finished watching Heartbreak High. It was fun, nothing spectacular, but it was a fun show. And I have been re-watching Gilmore Girls for the past few weeks as well. It's like the perfect show to get into the autumnal spirit. So that's the one that I've been watching the most recently. I'm really in a phase of re-watching things. I'm re I recently started re-watching... Oh, I dropped my yarn. I recently started re-watching The 100 as well. Like these kind of shows that remind me of my teenage years. Now I sound super old. But I think it's because I'm right now in the phase of a lot of where a lot of changes are going on and therefore watching shows that I have already seen so like re-watching them is a bit calming and like relaxing to do so I've been mainly re-watching shows <laughs> D'accord Comment se passent les cours en France et comment tu te sens en ce moment? Je vais répondre à cette question en français <laughs> et je vais faire beaucoup d'erreurs parce que c'est aussi matin donc je suis un peu fatiguée mais en fait tout se passe Très bien. Um, Sciences Po, uh, c'est un peu dur parce que c'est une grande école et c'est un peu différent de mon université à, aux Pays-Bas. Mais en fait, uh, je crois que tout ça passé très bien et oui, j'ai beaucoup hâte de, de voir comment uh, les courses se passent et tout ça. Ah ouais, bon, mon français c'est... Je ne pas parfait à ce moment, à ce moment mais uh, je vais pratiquer un peu. Mais en général, parler en français euh, se passe bien en ce, mom ce moment. Je fais beaucoup d'erreurs tout le temps, mais je, je crois que je vais euh, progresser très vite ici. Euh, aussi avec quelques cours en français. Aïe. Aussi, les sous-titres, c'est beaucoup de travail. Pour moi. 
dans l'avenir. <rire> et avec moi, donc oui, je me sens bien. Euh, beaucoup de différences entre euh, les Pays-Bas et la France, euh, quelques différences culturelles et aussi euh, la langue et tout ça, mais les gens ici sont très 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 gentils et euh, la nature et les montagnes sont vraiment magnifiques. Donc, oui, je me sens bien. Je suis juste, juste en train de chercher un peu de routine, routine euh, dans ma vie euh, et d'avoir un petit peu de, de structure pour me sentir euh, un peu plus calme et pas très chaotique. Donc oui, tout va bien et c'est ça mon, ma réponse en français. I hope you enjoyed my little bit of speaking French and my accent, but yeah. <laughs> If you were the president for one day, what would you do? Okay, first of all, um, despite the fact that I'm doing political science right now, I don't really dream of being the president. I think politics are very interesting, but that being in it wouldn't necessarily do it for me. I think I've said it before, but I'd love to go in the world of journalism and work in that field. So. I would love to watch it from a distance, but not necessarily be in the political field. But if I would be president for one day, I think that there will be a lot of shit <laughs> to fix that maybe is not possible to do in one day. And I think that the answer is also pretty complex. And uh, the main thing for me lies in, in like uh, equality and people being treated equally. So I would definitely make my changes in there. And I think also that it depends a lot in which country you will be president. Yeah, and I think also I would not be happy being president for one day, even though it might be better than the president we have now, because we, first of all, in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands we don't have a president, we have a prime minister. So the concept of a president for me is already, not that I like the royal family, but I wouldn't really want a president either. So <laughs> it's all pretty bad, actually. So I would say tackle things regarding equality, gender equality, discrimination, anything regarding racism, I would try to tackle that. But yeah, again, I think in one day not so much as possible, so I have to keep it realistic. <laughs> Let me know what you would do if you would be president for one day, or if you're also like me, that would freak you out a lot to be president for one day. A question of questions. Do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? <laughs> Are you interested or...? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have one. I am very single and also not really in the right mindset for it. The thing is, like, I'm very happy with the way my life is right now. Uh, I'm busy focusing on my academic life, on my knitting stuff, my friends, like anything like that. So if I happen to meet someone, of course, I am, I'm open to it, but I'm not really actively looking for it and honestly dating and dating apps are not really it for me i mean i've i've been on some dates on dating apps and it was fun but not it's not necessarily something that i enjoy a lot so right now i'm focused like putting my focus on a bit of other things but who knows that might change in the future so no boyfriend or girlfriend at the moment this is a very cute question what's some of your favorite things or moments lately this is a good question, especially regarding the phase of my life that I am in right now with a lot of stuff going on all the time. But the things I enjoy the most are being with really nice people. And that is a one thing about going abroad. Like I've met so many nice people here already. It can feel a little bit shallow sometimes, since especially in the beginning, you don't really know people that well so it's very fun but you don't really have that many deep conversations and stuff but right now i'm finally feeling that i'm getting to the point where i know a lot of people here and that i'm getting to know them a little bit better so that's been one of my favorite things to just hear more stories and get to know people then one of my other favorite things is just the view everywhere the mountains are phenomenal like everywhere you look in grenoble you can see a mountain and that's just so gorgeous. I, for me, it almost looks fake. I'm always like, wow, it just looks like someone put a big screen <laughs> out with a fake mountain on it. So that's really nice and yeah, that I enjoy a lot. I'm trying to really find the enjoyment in the little things, in like the going on hikes, uh, going 
to do sports, uh, enjoying my academic life, things like that. And then also like calling my family and friends and working on my knitting project. It's a way for me to really stay grounded and to be in the moment and to just do something and kind of vide la tête, uh, make my head empty, empty my thoughts and stuff like that. So yeah, that's been one of my favorite things lately. And also I've been really, really enjoying the feeling that I am getting more grip on the French language and picking up more words from the people around me and yeah that's really nice to feel that you're at least mm, it's not yeah it's kind of progressing but it's also the feeling of being a bit more natural and understanding the French system and the French world and French city a bit better so I've been really enjoying that a lot as well how did you start the knit club or how did you join one or did you join one? I think I have said this before, but the way I started my knit club was because I made, a, I just put in my story, like a, a post, asking if people would be interested in having a, a knit club in the Netherlands. And then quite some people already responded. It was like way more than I expected. Because at the beginning I thought if there would be like three or four people, I would be already super happy. But it was from the beginning already pretty big. And then over time it has kept growing and people sometimes still send me DMs saying that they also live in the Netherlands and that they want to join. And at this point, I can check how many people are in there, but it's like a lot. Yeah, it's uh, 89 people are in the Knit Club group chat. And we often organize, or often, once in a while, oft, uh, organize like meetings and stuff like that. So it's been really cool meeting a lot of new people. So that's the way I created the Knit Club, by just having an Instagram post and then I think I was lucky to have an audience that responded to it really quickly, but still I would never expect that 89 people to be in there. That's really amazing. So yeah, very thankful for that. What was your first impulse to start learning to knit? It was during COVID, so I was just bored and I wanted something to distract me. And I was also very bad at paying attention to the online lectures and seminars and stuff. So I would be on my phone and I thought that maybe knitting would be a good distraction in that way. So that's one of the first. And then later it also shifted to the thought that I really liked making my own clothes because I felt that it was a bit more sustainable and also a very good creative outlet to make exactly what you wanted. So those were my first impulses to start knitting. Do you still have your first knitted item? I, yeah, I have it. My first knitted item was a scarf. Like a really simple one that I've never worn, actually, because it's like full of holes and stuff. Uh, and I still have it, but it's at my mom's place right now. It's not with me here in Grenoble. And my second knitted item was a sweater uh, that I no longer have in its original form because it's a sweater that I re-knitted. So that one I have unraveled and re-knitted again, and I'm still very happy with that decision. <laughs> What's your favorite fiber to work with and or wear? Right now I'm working on like a mix of a mohair and a wool and I really love that combination. I think it like makes the most beautiful fabric. So I've been loving that. For summer tops I really like mm, cotton merino by Knitting for Olive for example. It's a really nice fiber to work with but in general I'm a fan of natural fibers. So I like wool, I like mohair, I like alpaca, like things like that a lot. So that basically. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna end with this one, I think. And that is, what's your dream knit? Um, and that's something that I find very, very difficult to think. But actually, th this project that I'm working on right now, this is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit, has been on my list for a long time. But I felt that it was too advanced and now that I'm working on it, I think that's actually completely fine. I mean, I haven't gotten to the part yet where you have to sew in the zipper, so maybe that's going to be a nightmare. But this one has been on my list for a long time, so I would say it's maybe a dream knit. Um, and my other really big goal would be to design my own, own like one of my own uh, sweater designs soon. Because I haven't made a complete sweater design myself. I've done cardigans and stuff, but not a sweater. So. Yeah, I would love to do that. That's like one of my dream knits. So I'm gonna end with that one here. I really, really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe since then you'll know exactly when I have another video again. 
and if you want to send in questions like or things for the next q a follow me on my instagram let me see how much the progress is i can actually try it on the sweater now before i forget it let me try on the sweater So the progress, it's not a lot, it's like just a couple of rows and this is where I'm at right now, but <laughs> yeah. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Like I said before, like and subscribe and I will see you again next week. Please stay safe until that time and see you again. So